All right, I want to take a minute to talk about Power BI's map tools. Now, I've used mapping software in a lot of different places, a lot of different tools, and I can honestly say that Power BI has done it better than anyone else. It's powerful, it's flexible, and most importantly, it's incredibly user-friendly. You don't need to find data at the latitude and longitude level. You don't need to look up coordinates. If you have any sort of geospatial indicator, a town name, a zip code, a country, a continent, chances are Power BI will be able to very smoothly integrate it into its map visuals. So let's take a look at how that works. If you look at your visualizations pane, you'll actually see three different mapping options. This plain white globe is the standard map option. You also have a filled map option, as well as the ArcGIS maps for Power BI. Now they all work in a very similar way they all take very similar fields, but they each have kind of their own flavor. And I'll show you a couple comparisons. But we're gonna start with the basic map and it's gonna drop it right in here, right in the slot that we have left. And you can see by the fields list, it's gonna ask for some sort of a location indicator. And lucky for us, we've got a territory lookup with continent and country, which we had already categorized in the data sheet as countries and continents. So they've got that little globe icon. That means we know Power BI is gonna be able to handle these fields. Let's grab country and drop it into location. And immediately we get some sort of mapping happening. And what's going on, there's no data being visualized yet. There's no legend, no values, just kind of points that are pinpointing the different countries, Germany, France, UK, US, Canada. So it's a good start, but we're not quite there yet. We need to give it some sort of values to actually compare and visualize for us. So if we want to show country level performance by something like orders, which is one of our KPIs, we could grab total orders and there are a couple places to put it, either size or color saturation. So I'll show you color saturation first because it's very, very subtle. You see that the size of the bubbles stayed exactly the same. They just got a little bit lighter and they're actually so small that they're almost impossible to see. So I don't think that's going to be a very good option for us. Let's drag it over to size instead. And that's a little better. So you see larger bubbles now for the US at 7,851 orders. Australia's a little bit lower, 5,212. And then the European countries are in the 2000s. So to compare the other map types here, I'll show you what these look like. I can just switch the type to a filled map. It's very similar, but now it just kind of fills in the outline of the countries as opposed to putting bubbles or dots over them. So if you prefer this style, you can go ahead and stick with it. That's totally fine. Notice that the size option disappears and our total orders field has been shifted into the color saturation option since that's the only place where values make sense here, aside from tooltips. So pretty interesting. You also have the ArcGIS option, which is a little bit more sophisticated. It's also a little bit slower and a little bit clunkier. You can see it's kind of dynamic as far as highlighting country outlines and shapes are concerned. But again, kind of slow, a little bit clunky to load. So I'm gonna stick back to our original map option and now, because viewing this at a global level isn't really that insightful, I'd like to have easy controls to drill in at least to specific continents. And that will help kind of narrow the focus or the view of this map to give us something a little bit more user-friendly. So before we do anything else, let's make a couple formatting tweaks. We actually don't need this title here, so we'll turn the title off, drag it down a bit. And one last adjustment, we're showing the bubble size by total orders, but we can also pack a lot more information for each country using the tool tips. So let's go ahead and pull total revenue as well as total profit into those tool tips. And remember, you don't see those up front. They just get embedded. So now hovering over these areas shows you not only the orders, but also the revenue and profit. So a lot of information kind of tucked away in this map. Now, in order to give the users a means of drilling into more specific areas, what we can do is add a slicer. And instead of a date slicer, 
like we practiced the first time. This time I want to use the continent field and just drop it in. But instead of a vertical list of checkboxes or drop down, there's another style that's actually going to work really, really well for this layout. And that's the horizontal style with buttons. And I can access that through the formatting tools and it's actually in the general category. And where it says orientation vertical, we're going to change that to horizontal and we're going to resize this to fit really nicely right into this little space above the map. And one other thing that we can change while we're in the formatting here is it's only got single selection options for Pacific, North America, and Europe. But if we drill into selection controls, we can add a select all option, which adds one more button here. And we can delete that header or deactivate that header that says continent. And I think that should just about do it. We'll resize a little bit, kind of fit it nicely in here. So now when you select an individual continent, the map will go ahead and zoom in to that particular area, which makes it a bit more readable and a bit easier to interact with these different types of tooltips. So remember, one of the key criteria that our AdventureWorks clients needed to see was performance by sales territory. And by creating this map and these user-friendly slicers, we're able to provide an entire view focused on each core sales territory. So let's go ahead and select all. And there you have it. That just about fills out our executive summary. We've packed a lot of information in here, but kept things relatively clean and organized and tight. We use the matrix views, bar charts, KPI cards, text cards, maps, and a date slicer. And we are only just getting started. Next up, we're gonna take a quick look at the tree map visuals and then start building out an entirely new product-focused page.